So I'd like to talk through part of the analysis and framework of what is really a classic conversation that came out of John Doyle's 1978 paper uh, in terms of talk, titled Guaranteed Stability Margins for, for, L, for LQG, um, which actually involves LQE and, and LQR, so to be an LQG has the mixture of things. And what's really one of the more interesting abstracts of anything, it basically has this very simple comment of, there are none. Because this was kind of in a framework where people were thinking, I can do LQR and LQE and build the entire controller and everything should be fine. And there should be some ability to make it robust. And people were starting to talk about, well, maybe I could do that in a robust way. And there's some good things about it and get complete closure on everything. Because to some extent, LQR, the linear quadratic regulator, you can show a robustness if it's just that. But remember, that requires knowing all of the states. So what John Doyle did, and in a rather dense one-page paper um, to get to kind of make an impact in the community, he chose a very interesting approach there. And what's interesting is that it kind of goes through and picks a very simple system and shows that there's a whole bunch, there's some interesting issues with it. Well, what I want to do here is I want to talk about walking through the, the system because it's a really nice two-state system that you can actually do all of the processes on. And in fact, to an extent, it was, so, it was really well chosen to be able to show all the pieces you need for building a, a um, classic linear quadratic regulator, linear quadratic estimator, and therefore linear quadratic Gaussian controller because <clears throat> he wants to be able to set this up to have then further conversations analytically to make this work. So you start with this two-state system. Um, two states, A is, you know, A, B, and C matrices there. Um, very nicely constructed. The A matrix is clearly unstable. Lambda is a one and one. What you end up getting is then also disturbances and noise terms. They're basically noise terms, one which has um, variance that uh, variance of sigma. It's really kind of sigma squared, but we'll go with that. Uh, sigma squared there, just kind of go with that for the moment. And then this V of T is then also the noise that happens on the output Y term. A couple things you might immediately ask. Is this system controllable? And it turns out, yes, it is. It is full rank. And on top of it, the eigenvalues are of similar sort of magnitude, which is really good because it means that, okay, that you're not just saying here's a system that's controllable, but only barely controllable. It's a pretty solid system. You also know it's observable. And, you know, again, it looks a lot like the A matrix all of a sudden. So it's lambda is one and one. So again, you know, this is not only rank two, but very, very, very solid in terms of its eigenvalue strength. Eigenvalues give you the sort of the energy strength or the, a way of saying what's the strength along certain axes. And so this is very, very important. So it's not, so these systems are controllable and observable in a very strong way. Cool. So then what you can do is you can say, I can say, well, I can solve for LQR uh, and the optimization for LQR because um, for, K, for K, KR and then KF, and all of a sudden you build a system like this. Uh, where you have a parameter f related to an interesting sort of extra parameter here. Sigma shows up in D. And you have this wonderful system of I can have an input system, LQE, LQR. Everything is great. And in which case, you're immediately going, hey, wait, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> uh, how, how did you do this solution, please? Um, and so, OK, you actually can do it. And LQR, and he used two, ma two matrices here, R equal to one, which is then just a scalar, and Q is a two, and again, that makes sense because, again, it kind of, kind of makes sense given how B looks. And then I've also got for Q, I've got this interesting matrix, one, 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 multiplied by one, one, which is basically a matrix of all one, a two by two matrix of all ones, right? times the parameter Q. And this Q parameter is a way of saying, well, what's the relative sort of strength between Q and R, the relative strength between sensing and actuating, right? And, and this is always a classical thing uh, that you might trade off between these. And so then you would say, taking those two things, you take an error metric J like this, you could actually simplify it down. 
of, but these are quadratic error metrics of where Q is going to be symmetric, R is symmetric, you can kind of see by observation they are. Um, and so what you see is that, yeah, you can actually go and, and work this out. Well, what you get for the solution is we know that the solution is a Riccati equation, which is this wonderful equation. And most people just look at it and go, right, that's hard. That's going into MATLAB or Python scripts or something. I'm, you know, um, but it turns out what's beautiful is you do get a solution, right? And you get a solution uh, for KR, you get a solution for P, which is a symmetric matrix into this where one of the two solutions gives you a proper stabilization term that gives you the optimal, optimal stabilization for the LQR system. LQR basically says, assuming that I have all states, it means I'm just looking at the A and B parts of this, I can solve this. Great, right? Another aspect is since R is one, inverse of R is one, uh, the R's just drop out of the formulation. So that does make this problem a little bit easier. But you still got to calculate this. And you're thinking, OK, I'm in for a whole bunch of pain here. But there's an interesting part to this, which is then to say, I'm, let me assume that the solution is of a potential form k of r f 1 and 1. What we're going to do here is realizing there's a uniqueness of solutions. So if I can find a solution by some method, then it's a solution. Now, if you wish to take a longer version to get the solution, sure, go right ahead. But if I can get a solution by any means, it is the solution. So we're going to go with this. And so what I see with this is that I get K of R is F11. OK, so the thing about that is that also says that because of this structure, I know it has to be B and P is 0, 1 of this. I can look at it in terms of these matrices. And this kind of gives me a constraint for P, because if that's true, then that's going to give me a constraint of 1, 1. The two terms have to be equal. And in fact, it means that the P11 one, one and P12 terms have to be equal. All right, let's take this one step further then. It says, well, then if I make P11 one, one just be related to that term, say by some factor A, I can say P is then just this matrix F, A, and a whole bunch of ones. I can do that and go, let me see if I can find A, right? But let's just put it there. It gives me at least something to work with. Well, if I look at what is P times A, because again, I'm going to need that here, right? And then if I look at what is, you know, and then of course, A transpose P is just the transpose of this. Well, now I've got both pieces. I'm like, okay, well, if I add that, I get this form, A, A plus one, so forth. Interesting enough, if I do two pieces, which then allows me to play off the transpose, and there's a two here. Um, if I look at, the, this should have been a two here. Then if I look at this, what I get is I get A there, there, A there. I get 2A, 2 plus A, 2 plus A, and 4. And I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. Let me put the whole equation together, and I get, well, for this whole thing, I get F squared and a whole bunch of 1s. For the Q, I get Q and a whole bunch of 1s. If I make A equal to 2, this is a whole, basically, this is a matrix of all 4s. And you're like, wait a minute, that would solve it if I make, if I had F equal to, like if I can solve the resulting quadratic equation, which then gives me F equals 2 plus 4 plus Q. You're like, oh, wow, that actually, that will solve it. And because of uniqueness of solutions, that's what we go with. You might wonder why it's a plus, because it's the plus where it gives me the stable control term. So we're in great shape there. It turns out you can do something similar for the LQE part of it which is now the part that says, hey, how do I do the estimator? The estimator now needs to be a question of the noise. And interestingly enough, talking about that the noise element here is 1 uh, for V of N. That's its, that's its variance, or actually variance squared. Similar sort of thing for, for QW, which is going to be off this. Notice it's 1, 1, very cleverly chosen. Because then it means if I actually do WW transpose for for that, it's all ones, and then a sigma, which is really variance squared, but good enough. And it turns out then, I also get a set of Riccati equations to solve. I get a Riccati equation that simplifies a little bit because of the one. Huh, funny, the, this looks exactly like R. This looks like Q. The Riccati equation looks pretty much the same thing, and I get exactly the same solutions. Very, very cleverly designed. 
to put this whole thing together to make what is a really, really nice system for looking at these Riccati equations. And so there's something to just kind of stepping back and looking at how, how carefully put together this resulting system was done and to then be able to talk, have further analytic conversations around it. And it's a wonderful example if one wants to say, well, what does it look like to work your way all the way through um, a full LQR, LQE controller? And this gives you um, its overall solution.